I was very keen to bring motorsport back to Goodwood. My grandfather had really kind of given me the bug. I used to come racing when I was little um, with him. He'd take me around, told the story many times, take me around the pits. I'd meet all the drivers. We had a big party here. The big drivers, a lot of them stayed in the house. It was fantastic for an eight-year-old. So I'd always dreamt when he closed it, much to my fury, I was about 12, um, I always dreamt that we might get it going again. So the festival speed was to me like the, the start of that. I had no idea that it was going to end up being such an important part of it. And of course, the park um, up to that point was used very much. My mother had these very important international dressage events. We had these big arenas in the park, um, which turned out to be saving grace, actually, in terms of planning in the end, having those arenas there. So they were very, very helpful indeed. And, um, and of course, sheep, which are still there. So a few people, obviously, who come to the festival every year realise that actually isn't how it looks all the time. It's actually a park and it's full of, uh, it's full of livestock and, um, and greens. What we've been talking about in 91, 92 was reopening the motor circuit. That was the big plan, the big ambition. That's what we really wanted to do, was get that wonderful circuit open for racing again. And as we all know, that hit a wall of... Uh, of, uh, of resistance and so we wanted to see if there was something else we could do um, which we could actually which would be allowed to do and also which would test the waters a bit and give us a feel for whether there was still enthusiasm for Goodwood and motorsport or not so had this idea of perhaps trying to do something in front of the house on the private road and um, I remember the first time that the uh, track inspector Derek Ngaro it was, he was the FIA track inspector, came down. He actually came down to look at the circuit with me and to tell me what, he, what I'd have to do in relation to the concrete barriers that were there and whether they were usable and just give me a bit of a feel for the motor circuit. And after that, really, it was, it was hardly on my mind at all. I just said, Derek, why don't you just come and have a look at this? I've just got a bit of an idea of an event in the park. Will you come and have a, come and have a little look at it for me, see what you think? And actually, I started off at the kennels. Um, some of you will know that that's a whole different direction. We went from the kennels up, past the stables, and then left up the front of the house. I remember driving Derek up then, him going, God, this looks, um, this looks pretty quick. I'm not sure this is going to work. So I was a bit worried, and I said, well, be, you know, it's so important we try something. He said, well, is there not another? Let me have a look down here. So then I drove him down, to, kind of down towards the, the park gates, and we turned around and went up from there. And, you know, I couldn't believe it when he said, I think we could do this. I think this would work. When we first dreamed up the Festival of Speed, um, we were on Adrian Hamilton's inaugural um, tour of the Loire. And um, we were in some chateau in France, um, in the bar, and Charles March was there um, with his friend Michael Pearson. And uh, Charles said that he was thinking of running um, a speed hill climb in the park. We decided that a hill climb would be the answer because that, the, the road is, 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 lends itself to a hill climb. It's got some great corners. It's got, hasn't really got a straight, but, it, but some of it was going to be pretty quick. We tried to talk him out of it, actually. Um, and I said to him that if uh, we tried to run, a, um, say, a championship hill climb event, it would be a lovely event, lovely people. But I could probably give him the names and addresses of every spectator because they'd all be sort of re relatives, you know, they'd all be family members because um, the, the, the crowd attraction is quite small. Um, and I think Robert it was who suggested, um, well, why don't we do it for historic cars, you know, and try and get together a bunch of the great cars from the past. Um, because these are the th things that are run by the people that we know, by friends, um, and we can pull together a bunch of those. And they turned to me and said, Doug, draw up a list. We were very lucky at the beginning. Um, by the amount of the sheer help, and the number of people who helped us um, really get it off the ground. And obviously there were people like Doug Nye and Robert Brooks who helped me hugely with the entry list and... and uh, and getting the kind of right cars to come. But people really, I mean, I'd met John Sergis when, when I was a child. He raced at Goodwood. He had his first motor race ever at Goodwood. And John was uh, hugely helpful in, in, in all the motorcycle content. So unusually too, I was very keen that the, for the festival should incorporate cars and bikes together. And that was again, that still doesn't happen very often at all. And uh, John used to, if you like, put that entry list together for me and play a very, a very big part. And, there have been lots of people 
um, from the, those very, very early years uh, who played a huge part in making it all happen. And so I draft a list, I think, of a, initially of 100 um, names of drivers and 100 types of car that we'd like to see. And for me, it was like being a small boy taken into a toy shop and told, write down everything that you'd like from these shelves. And I wrote down everything that I'd love to see and that I thought like-minded enthusiasts, just like us, would also like to see. Rob Widows and I were invited by Mansell, actually. It came through Nigel originally, and then came from Carl Haas, Carl and Bernie Haas, to come and join them at the Indy 593. And we thought, well, God, we're doing this, we're going to do this event, this little event we were trying to put on as well, in just a little bit later in, in June. It was mad. We went there in May, and um, we had an amazing time, and actually it made me realise, it just made me really, really understand about entertainment. And, and, and the fact that motor racing could just be so fabulously entertaining. So it was a, a really, really useful lesson. Of course, Mansell amazingly nearly won the race, but was just taken out at the end by Emerson, Ari Leyendijk. And um, we learned a lot. And I even, I remember, look, I went and bought, this is the original bag, the Indy 500 gift shop. And I went and bought all this black and white stuff, this terrible hat. But I suddenly thought, wow, yeah, we've got to do something. It could all be, why don't we just go black and white? And the, the event's got to have a particular look and feel. And um, I bought all these ribbons, never did anything with them, but we just bought them for reference. And, and of course we did. The first speed has always been black, white, and silver. Um, that little visit played a huge part. It played a huge role in shaping the festival speed. It was also so much, so clearly in our minds, just a few months later, I think it was Rob Widows that came up with Festival of Speed. Um, but anyway, that's what we ended up with. And um, it stood us in, you know, pretty good stead ever since. And we had to think of a title. Um, and it wasn't a race meeting, it wasn't a championship, it was a one-off. So that I suddenly thought Festival of Speed. <laughs>